In the heating and cooling system, cooling-based offenses are considered especially heinous. In Katy, Texas, the dedicated HVAC contractor who investigates these improperly cooled structures is the creator of an elite AC service squad known as the Sweaty Victims Unit. These are his stories. Service history really rules the roost, but there are clues. When I go to a house and I have no service history, there are clues for the technician that is paying attention. I'm more than a technician, I'm a licensed contractor. But this turned into a crime scene. But only if you pay attention and you understand how things occurred, most likely. Hi, my name is Ray Austin with uh, Austin Air Company. Uh, today's topic is going to be similar to what I've done the past couple of videos. Uh, we're going to be talking about air conditioning brands. Um, in this particular video, it's going to be trained because that's what this customer had um, at the time that I serviced them. Uh, now, one thing I want to highlight on this video is that train is oftentimes considered a premier brand or a better brand than what others you know they kind of have some gimmick uh some gimmick type advertising associated with them common knowledge it's hard to stop a train you know it's kind of like a play on words because you know a locomotive train running down a track it's hard to stop because you pull out in front of the train it's just going to plow right through um, but the other problem with train with trains in general, meaning a train that runs on a track, we're not talking about air conditioning, we're talking about a train that goes down the track, is that if the track's not maintained, it derails. So <laughs> you gotta take it, you know, you gotta take it for what it is. Um, one thing to realize is that I'm, I live in a hot climate. And so you'll get pundits that will say, you know, once once summer finally gets here, they'll say, oh, well, it's just as hot where you live as it is everywhere else. But they don't realize we've been at those temps for months. You know, so when I mean when I say hotter climate, I mean that you know we spend more time at elevated temps. You know, air conditioning for my climate is probably somewhere nine, ten months out of the year. You know, and so you'll get some variances in that regard, you know, based on personal opinion. Maybe somebody, you know, it likes it warmer. So you got to take it for what it is, you know, and so I try to put things into context so you understand where we're going, um, because otherwise it's just a bunch of blah, 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 about nothing. So, you know, choose the information that you want to listen to carefully, because HVAC, you know, I mean, it's here, there, and yon, and what's coming down the pike is going to change everything regardless of what the brand is, so on and so forth. So a lot of people get into this brand bashing game. I did a video here just a couple of, you know, probably a couple weeks ago about it's hard to stop a Goodman. Is that the case all the time? No. You know, it greatly depends on how the unit was installed, you know, and there's a list of other things, you know, how it was maintained, you know, so on and so forth. So you've got to take this, you know, there, there is no perfect brand. If there was a perfect brand, I would have gotten out of this business a long time ago. I'm approaching three decades. It will be a full three decades by the end of this year that I've been in HVAC. I haven't always owned my own company. I've, you know, I was forced to sell the brands of other manufacturers. You know what a common theme was? You know, when I'd go to service this equipment because it's broken, you know what the common theme was? Hey, you know what? Your company sold me this machine. They said it was the best. And here it is a year, two years, three years later, and now it's broken. I thought you you know, I thought this I thought this equipment was the best. Why is it broken? My other system, it lasted 10, 12 years. It it rarely if ever broke. So you want to see the myth, you know, it's about sales. It's not about anything else. You know, and so, which leads me into another point, is that Train was once a good brand. Does that mean it never broke? No. It's mechanical equipment at the end of the day, folks. It's going to break. But, you know, back in that era, 
uh, Train actually was the only manufacturer, Train American Standard, I mean, American Standard made units, you know, and, and back in that era, American Standard actually owned Train. So you've got to understand the history of this. You know, things change as time goes on, and that was back in the R22 Freon days. They designed and built their own compressor, where all the other manufacturers, they were using... They were using a variation. It could have been a Tecumseh compressor. It could have been, uh, you know, Copeland. I think Copeland uh, compressors were probably somewhere in the realm of 90% of the market. So, you know, you buy any other brand and, you know, it's a Copeland. You know, does that mean that Copeland is perfect? No, it's mechanical equipment, people. And so the, the highlight that I want to tell you is, is that Train no longer manufactures their own compressors. You know, they developed an alliance with Copeland. They call it the Alliance Compressor. You're going to see that in this video. So I'm going to touch on a bunch of stuff. I'm going to try to keep this intro to this short, but it's to warn you that if you skip around and you don't watch the video to the entirety, nine times out of ten, you're going to miss the whole point of this video which is fine if that's what you want to do. <laughs> be my guest, skip around, you know, do whatever you want. I put the information out there for you to listen to and watch it. You're only going to get one opinion if you're listening to my channel, my opinion. You know, if you call me, you live in the Katy, Texas area, you call me, you're going to get me. You're not going to get, you know, I'm not going to spin a technician roulette wheel and send you a free technician that is paid on commission. You know, that's another you know, hoopla that you're going to have to decide on, whether you want to pay for professional advice. If you want the freebie advice, you can choose the freebie advice. They, they're nine times out of 10, they are paid on commission. You know, so what they recommend for you is maybe entirely different than what I do. And you'll see that if I have the time to make, I've got another upcoming video where I get, where I touch more into that scenario. And so with that said, we're going to cut it there because I don't want to make the video all about me just rambling on and on and on. Um, uh, we're going to dive right into this. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to tell you versus uh, via what how this situation developed. You know, if you don't watch the whole video, then the point is going to sail right over your head. So with that said, stay tuned. We're diving into it right now. The home. Better. Welcome home. So uh, I get this call, this would have been in 2022 uh, during the summertime, uh, and here I'm inspecting the interior equipment. There you can see that the uh, indoor coil uh, was manufactured in February of 2017. That's an important detail um, because I show uh, here coming up 
the, the house was built sometime in 2015. Um, some other particulars is, is that this homeowner uh, recently purchased this house a few years ago. So you've got a, a changing of the guard, so to speak, in terms of own, uh, home ownership. And nine times out of 10, you know, builder, builder installed equipment is, isn't registered. And so, but this is just to uh, give you a, an overall view of the indoor equipment. Why details are important. The evaporator cool was manufactured in 2017. The house was built in 2015. So that means that indoor coil failed at some point. You can't build a house in 2015 with a 2017 coil. So I know how the internet works. So I provide this to you as reference. You can compare the, the previous coil to see that it has been replaced under warranty. This one, uh, breaker was tripped, uh, bad cap. It's got Freon in it. See that low side is hooked up. Compressor runs for a short time and then just dies and it doesn't sound very good when it is running. So, She's a goner. So I would have liked to have gotten the uh, footage of what this compressor was doing on camera, but the goofy thing had gone into an overload condition, which basically prevents the compressor from running. Um, if you stay tuned to this video, I, I do have footage, but not of this particular compressor to show you essentially what this unit was doing, it's very similar. Um, so you'll want to watch that. That's going to be an upcoming video here eventually, hopefully within the next couple of weeks or so, um, to show you another situation with compressor trouble. Um, and what happens, you know, when a compressor still runs, but it doesn't run good enough to keep running. You know, this is another ploy uh, within this business is just because your air conditioner clicks on and off doesn't mean it's going to work. So you want to stay tuned and uh, maybe subscribe to my channel if you want to see, learn more issues uh, in regards to all this. Uh, this shows me uh, pulling this unit out and getting ready to replace it. So I won't bore you with the cleanup. Here is instant cleaning technology, courtesy of YouTube, which leads me to the next source of uh, sorcery is instant equipment delivery, courtesy of YouTube. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. We have the technology to get this train back on the track. This customer is getting a Bosch. The Bosch Inverter AC. This thing is a rock star. Get ready to start your cooling engines. Here we go. Get ready. Get set. Wait for it. Wait for it. So what you're watching here is that LED readout is telling you what temperature it is. It's right around 90, 91 degrees outside at the time um, that I'm installing this. And so that's initially uh, you know, what the startup display is showing. I drop down and show you the amp draw. That's just the fan motor running currently. It's getting ready to start up here. Um, and so Essentially, you know, what this shows is, is the noise on startup is very, very low. That's one other benefit of going to an inverter. Um, just realize that not all inverters are created equal. Every manufacturer has inverters out there, but they're, they're not created equal. Um, this thing is a rock star. And essentially, um, on this particular model, depending on uh, configuration, you know, in, in terms of capacity, it could be anywhere from... The noise is from the next door's lawnmower. 60 speeds on up to maybe 70 some speeds. Um, it varies slightly due to configuration. Here the fan is all that's running still. The, the compressor still has yet to fire off. And so I'm not cutting this out because I want to show, you know, how this thing runs. You know, it usually takes some time before the compressor will fire off. But you know we have a signal here because uh, the fan wouldn't, you know, nothing would be running if, if there was no call for cooling. And so, uh, I mean, it's pretty hot out. I mean, it was probably, probably 
probably somewhere around 80% relative humidity out. So, I mean, it was, it was pretty toasty uh, when I did this job. And so another thing to point out is, is that you're saying, oh, well, you know, I, I don't really want to go with something so fancy and blah, blah, blah. That's a noisy ass lawnmower. But the problem is, is that inverter is the future. You know, uh, we're going to be switching to uh, mildly flammable refrigerants in the very near future. And so uh, the advantage with the inverter is, is there's no arcing components. And so I have a feeling that uh, a lot of the older style air conditioners are going to be going away uh, and because there was one such manufacturer that's pretty much all inverter now. I think except for maybe two low-end units. Everything else is inverter. So this is the future, folks, but you got to realize that just here are the compressors getting ready to start. You can see it just flipped over to zero. There you go, 15, 13, 12. And so essentially, you know, when this thing starts up, you know, look at that amp draw. I mean, it's next to nothing. The other thing is, is that when it flipped over to zero, did you hear it? Did you hear it start up? Did you hear that compressor? Essentially what it sounds like is it sounds like a very slight purr. Now, this particular job, uh, the air, the uh, the next door neighbor was, started mowing his yard. So there is some outside noise. Now you can see here, I'm showing that amp draw. You know, and just to give you some reference, you know, a traditional air conditioner, I don't know what that train, I think that train was probably pulling somewhere around maybe 15, 18 amps, you know, and that's on every startup. It, it pulls that same amount. And so uh, this is a very uh, unique technology. And uh, obviously, you know, this, this isn't necessarily for everybody. I mean, if you're looking to sell your house or, you know, you're not looking to stay put, um, then this may not be the choice for you. Um, the other advantage is, is that it can cut your uh, electric bill by up to 50%. Um, and obviously, you know, there's choices within that because, you know, I mean, if you've got more than one HVAC system, then it may not drop at a full 50%. But, you know, essentially in time, this thing will pay for itself. But the con is, is that, you know, if you're looking to sell the house in the near future, then you, you probably won't recoup the difference in cost. So essentially what I show here is that I'm getting ready to charge the machine. <clears throat> if the charge isn't right, then the machine isn't going to work. You know, it's one thing to cool your home when it's 80 degrees. It's quite the opposite yeah. if it's 100 degrees or hotter it outside. Too, dang, and so if the thing isn't charged right, it ain't going to run right. If it doesn't run right, you're not going to save the utilities, uh, you know, for the money that you were paying to, you know, install the thing from the get-go. So this isn't to show you how to do it. This is just explaining things, you know. I, I do not recommend you attempt to do this uh, on your own because an inverter runs at high DC voltages. You press the wrong thing, stick your hand in the wrong place at the wrong time, and you're probably going to kill yourself. So while this is uh, really looks amazing, you know, amazing new technology, uh, it's only for the professional. I'm I'm just showing you. you know, I'm not here to teach you how to do it. An inverter runs differently than a traditional AC. Basically, we take that 240 volt AC current and we turn it into three phase DC volts. From there, it is converted back to AC and then there's manipulation going on to control uh, how fast that compressor runs, how fast the motor runs, uh, so on and so forth. This is all done you know, via that board. And so essentially this thing is run at 58 hertz, which is a predetermined speed. Now, it, depending on configuration, this thing can be up over 60 hertz. So, but this, this particular unit is configured as a four ton. Another important feature of this particular system is that it's old person friendly, meaning there's no complicated thermostat to learn, you know, so, you know, if you're an older person looking for a, a better air conditioner that works better, performs better, lowers uh, humidity uh, set points in the home, this is the unit that you need to be looking at. 
Now, one thing you realize in terms of dehumidification, it does not control uh, dehumidification. It will help. But you got to understand how a dehumidifier works. You know, just manipulating a blower speed, you know, may help improve things mm, minorly, but it is not a true dehumidifier. Get this train derailment off my truck. <laughs> It's a, it's a train derailment. We got the fire chief over here. <laughs> so right here, I get ready to break this thing down. Uh, now, I, I'm very critical of train. Uh, you've got to understand where this criticism is coming from because they are often deemed as the best. This unit is a 16 seer unit. So it's, it's really considered a middle of the road. Uh, for 2015, this would have been a high-end unit. So why the heck do they put this garbage uh, compressor blanket in there? Uh, turns out this compressor is an Alliance compressor. Uh, so I provide you this proof that Alliance compressors is a joint venture of Emerson, Train, and Lennox. These are three separate entities. Emerson is the maker of Copeland compressors. Believe it or not, there is very little difference. There is nothing special about a train. This is their quality uh, compressor blanket. It's absolutely garbage. This is why I don't uh, care for the train mentality because, you know, essentially you're not, you're paying for something that isn't there. Now, there is virtually no difference between an Alliance compressor and a Copeland, except for the fact that this thing is painted orange. That's the only difference. <laughs> it's essentially the same stupid crap that you're gonna buy in any other unit. The problem is, is that you're gonna pay a premium for train. And I had to climb into this unit in order to get this video. You can see my foot right there. Um, you know, and so trying to change this thing out without damaging the coil, that spiny fin coil, I mean, they're you know known to leak You know, once they start aging. So, you know, you make the wrong move or something along those lines. I mean, it's, it's typically just not worth it. You're better off spending the money on a new uh, air conditioner. And so, you know, I've got several customers uh, that have used me for service, for maintenance uh, visits that have trains, you know. And so, you know, you know, but until there's a problem with them, you know, I mean, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. But the problem is, is that at some point they're going to break. And this is, you know, essentially showing you the, the garbage, the cheap garbage that they put in them for the premium prices they charge. You know, why? You know, you, you tell me, I'm just showing you what I found, which leads to the next point. HVAC is dangerous. I injured myself on this job, jammed my, my uh, finger, and you can see it's swollen there. Uh, boss man told me to keep working. P.S. I'm the boss man. That is in second stage. So in this case, uh, the York was slightly better only because it ran long enough for me to get video of it. Train stopped quite quickly. The point of this video is to tell you that solutions exist outside of the train brand. You know, I'm not a train dealer. In order to be a train dealer, you'd have to sell $100,000 worth of train equipment to be a dealer. Uh, and so with that said, I mean, you know, I don't sell that much in equipment. You know, my primary job is to go out and repair your unit. Sometimes that involves replacing equipment. My position is, is to potentially put you in a better position. Why I didn't replace this compressor? Primarily because it's not, a, it wasn't under warranty. The other thing is due to what's coming. What's coming, R410A is being phased out. 
You replace the compressor, you're only going to get a one-year warranty. Uh, in my climate, we use this equipment nine, ten months out of the year. What's coming? R410A is going to be banned here in the next couple of years. So this puts this customer in a better position because it's, it's going to lower their light bill and it's going to basically extend the life of their equipment for potentially at least 15 years. Keep that into consideration. If you live in the Katy, Texas area, you can give me a call at 832-475-6895. Or for more information, you can always visit me on my main website at www.austinairco.com. For Austin Air Company, my name's Ray Austin, and I hope your day is comfortable. Thank you. An inside joke for those of you who watched the whole video. Train dealers may not find it that funny.